country, but it talks about the whole continent of Africa was called Ethiopia. So, so this man, King Ahasuerus, he had people traveling from all over uh, because he was in charge of the whole empire. Now they had to search and send people who are going to search for a replacement. The Bible says they looked for young, beautiful virgins who were going to be brought into Susa, where his capital city was, and they would pamper them, make sure that they take them through manicure, pedicure, and, and, and prepare them to meet the king. But there was something amazing that God did. Esther was not from another province. Esther was already in Susa. When they were looking far for a replacement, the replacement was just under their nose. God is a God of mercy. God knew that uh, there was going to be a Jewish girl born in that area. Remember a very interesting story that they were Jewish people who were conquered by Nebuchadnezzar and he took them out of Jerusalem and he brought them uh, to Babylon. And when the Babylonians were removed, now those Jewish people were taken along and they found themselves around the area in Susa. And Esther grew up there, born in that area, being a foreigner in that area, and when they were looking for beautiful young women, she was chosen. And when she was prepared, she was chosen among thousands and thousands of young women coming from all over. And now in all these people coming from different areas, there was a nation that was hated, which was Jewish people. And there was a man by the name of Haman who plotted and made the king to sign on dotted line that he was going to destroy the Jewish people because he said to King Ahasuerus, there is a people within your kingdom who does things their own way. There's a people within your people. They don't follow rules as you lay them. They don't speak the language you speak. They don't pray the way we pray. They don't pray to the gods you instructed people to pray. And I think he pulled out even stories like your Daniel, and says, look at some of their dignitaries like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king before you made a law that no one was allowed to pray to their gods. And this man, Daniel, was found still praying three times a day facing Jerusalem. He was thrown into the lion's den. There were four guys who were friends to this Daniel, that there was a law that was made by King Nebuchadnezzar that immediately they hear a sound, they have to fall on their knees and bow to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. These guys, they refuse to bow. And he says, actually, this thing did not start when the law was made. It started when they were at the college, when they were under Ashpenaz, the eunuch, and they were given them the food given to by the king. And these, four, these three boys refused to eat the diet of the king they decided to continue to eat vegetables. So they say, you can see these guys are rebellious. Now we need to eliminate them. Otherwise, they are going to influence all other subjects. And now there was a law that these people were going to be removed. Now Esther was already chosen to be a replacement for Vashti, to be a queen. But she decided to conceal her identity that she is Jewish. Now, I want us to pick up verse 14. It says, for if, this is Mordecai, who was a cousin to Esther, who raised Esther as, her, as, as his own daughter. And he says, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Oh, hallelujah. We are not going to be silent. And I'm going to use this morning as a subject for my message. Find your voice. Find your voice. Now, finding your voice is more than just being willing to speak up in an uncomfortable situation. Finding your voice means to find your purpose in life and pursue it 
in spite of the opposition. Because every one of us born in this world, there is a purpose attached to your birth. And you have a responsibility to go out there and find your purpose. And immediately you find your purpose. Allow your purpose to guide you. Don't, uh, don't, don't entertain all the other uh, oppositions that you are going to get, all other mishaps that you are going to experience along the line. They are out there to drown your purpose. So hold on to your purpose because God has a plan and a purpose about your life. Now your, your, your purpose and your voice, it will open doors for you. And once those doors, unique doors are opened, make sure that you embrace them. These different doors that God is going to open because of your voice, they will make you a unique being. Uh, you are not going to be a, a photocopy of someone else, but you are just going to express your uniqueness here on earth. And your uniqueness doesn't mean it's going to show up where there are no challenges. There will be challenges, but you've got to rise up above challenges. Most of us wants to be loved and we, we, we blend in easily. And when you want to be different, people will always discourage you. People will show you um, resentment because you are trying to be different. But you are not called to blend in. You are called to be different. Find your voice. For me, that's very important for, 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 for all of us as believers to find our voice. Your voice is your gift. Your voice is your gift. Number one, your voice will save you from drowning. There are so many people that are drowning in this day. Drowning, drowning in sorrow, drowning in discouragement, uh, drowning in confusion. But if you are going to allow yourself to speak out what God has put in you, then you will survive. You will not drown. Now, the, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then the verse 2, it says, and the earth was without form, and darkness was covering the, 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 the surface of the deep. And then, then the next thing it says, and God spoke and said, let there be light. Immediately when God spoke the word, the light came. And from verse 3, we can see that God said, and things were created. Things were put back into its original positions. So I'm here to say to you guys, we are made in the image of God. We are made in the likeness of God. And God expects you and I to speak out and speak what we want to see happen. And if we learn to know that our voice is our, uh, our, our, is, uh, uh, what, our voice is our instrument that God wants to use to shift and change things around. So when Peter was called by Jesus, and Jesus said to, to Peter, come. When Peter saw Jesus walk on the water, and he said to him, Master, even if it's, if it's you, bid me to come. And, and Jesus said to Peter, come. The only thing he said to him, come. And the Bible says Peter stepped out of the boat, and he started to walk on the water. The rest of the other disciples were with him. They decided to stay back in the boat. They remained in the boat. They remained in the place where they were all the same. But Peter decided, I want to be unique. I want to have an experience that no one else had amongst the 12, the, the 12 disciples. And the Bible says he walked on the water towards Jesus. And as he was walking on the water, now there were two things that took place there as, as he was heading towards Jesus. The first thing that happened was there were people behind him who were calling for him and saying, what are you trying to do? We've never seen this before. It has never been done in this family. Why are you attempting things like this? Are you trying to be unique? Are you trying to be better than all of us? We are all safe in this boat. But Peter had to decide to say, I am going to break away from all these voices that are trying to make me an ordinary person. I am not an ordinary person, but I am born of the seed of God, the incorruptible seed. 
he stepped out of the boat in spite of those who were trying to hold him back. And if you want to make it in this life, decide to walk away from some of the voices. Culture is one of those things that holds people back. Because you are coming from a certain culture, you don't want to break away from it. You want to be like everybody else. You want to smell like everybody else. You want to speak like everybody else. But if you want to fulfill your purpose in life, you have to break away from some of the cultural things that are delaying us. Hallelujah. You know what? There's something very interesting when people who do marketing, they understand culture and they study different cultures. Whatever they are selling to you, they are selling it based on the culture. They are using existing networks to sell some of the products to you. And everybody else would love to buy that product because, not because they want it, but because everyone else has it. And they will tell you, if you don't have it, you don't look cool. Because you want to be accepted, you want to look cool, you go out there and buy that product. And when you get home with that product, you look at it, he says, I didn't need it. But now you have it because somebody sold it to you because you wanted to belong. So Peter stepped out of the boat. He refused to blend in with the rest of the other disciples. When he saw it was Jesus, he says, call me to come. And it was enough for Jesus to say to him, come. He went out of the boat, stepped on top of that uh, surface that was not a, 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 a solid surface. Water is not solid, but he stepped on that surface that was not a solid surface, but he started to walk on it because he said, at your weight, I will come. Then the second thing that happened was um, there were, he was fixing his eyes on Jesus. He was walking based on the instruction that says, come. Then he started taking his eyes off Jesus. He looked at the surface that he was walking on. That this surface, by the way, it's not a solid surface. And this surface was not just a, a, a fluid surface. There were waves that make it more unstable. And Peter started focusing on the waves that were moving him around. And he started to drown. As he was drowning, he remembered that there was a one who called me to come. And he called out and he said, Jesus, save me. And the Bible says Jesus came, took him by the hand, and saved him. And the Bible says then they walked back to the boat. Most of the time we end there and say Jesus saved him. But Jesus did not only save him, but he gave him another experience. He holding his hand. And then the Bible says they walked on the water back to the boat. Oh, I love this. Peter had an experience. If he has to write something in his biography, he will tell people, I have walked on the water. Years ago, there was a very interesting story. A Reynard Bonke, when he was in South Africa preaching around, uh, he was using a 5,000, 6,000, 10,000-seater tent. But he decided, he says, I need to preach the gospel. And uh, he ordered a 35,000 seater tent, the biggest tent in the world. Ever since, no one has ever, ever had a tent as big as uh, Reynard Bonke's tent. And it was put in Cape Town. They had a crusade. And uh, after that, the wind came, ripped that tent apart. And that was, it was only used once. Cost millions of rents. And, and when they were evaluating and looking at the tent, they discovered that uh, actually there, if he was going to use that tent, it was not going to be profitable. So they had to get the tent uh, into small sizes and give it away to different evangelists around that they can use that tent. But they looked at it that it did not make financial sense because it was going to cost a lot to transport that tent. And the offerings that they were using, they were, they were getting from most townships could not transport the tent. All right? But it's still known even today that he walked on the water. He believed God for the biggest tent and he had the biggest tent. Now, you, there are people who are analyzing it and say it was a waste of money and other things. But one thing he experienced is that he believed God for that tent and he had the tent. 
So I'm here to say to you, child of God, you've got to learn to walk on the water. There will be times when you are going to drown or you feel like you are drowning, but he is there to save you. Uh, people who attempt nothing in life, they, they will never have challenges because they are sitting and doing nothing. But decide in life and say, I am going to attempt to live by faith. And you will have, you will have opportunities to give up. But if you don't give up, you will have a testimony. It says, I have attempted this. I failed three, four times. But we are not going to talk about failing. We are going to talk about you making it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So your voice will save you from drowning. Because if you take a step of faith, uh, you will have opportunities to drown. If you decide today, I want to live a debt-free life, let me tell you, you, will, you, the enemy will attack your finances. You will look at your finances, you will be always have a deficit. And you've got to continue to stick to your confession and say, I am going to live a debt-free life. And the more you confess it, the more your debts accumulate. But don't move away from your confession. You will have a breakthrough ultimately. Amen. If you say by his stripes, I am healed, I live in divine health, I'm telling you, your enemy will continue to attack your health. Yeah, you will be having pains left and right and, and all these other diagnoses that will scare you. But stick and stand on the promises of God's word. Amen. There will be times when you are feeling, you know what, I'm going down. This is bad. I'm losing the battle. But you are not going to lose the battle. Hallelujah. Jesus came and he took Peter by hand and uh, he walked with him on the water. Amen. I mean, Peter was, can, can tell a story. If you listen to his testimonies, that man, I was about to drown. I was sinking and Jesus came and he took me out. But listen to you guys. If, you, if Peter was sitting in heaven today, he's talking a different language. Jonah said, you almost drowned. But I, 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 I went underneath. And for days, people thought, I'm gone, you know? But I did not drown. There was a fish waiting for me right underneath the water to take me in and send me to my destination. So your, your, your voice will save you. Hallelujah. Your voice, your purpose will save you. Number two, your voice will make sure that you get the attention. Now, the story of blind Bartimaeus in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 48, it says, Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. When, when blind Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by, the Bible says he shouted and he said, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. People around him, they said to him, quiet, you know, you are disturbing Jesus. Just, just, just hush, Batamayas. And the Bible says in verse 48, then he, he, he shouted more to get Jesus' attention. He did not care what people are saying to him. He cried out louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says Jesus stopped and said to the people, bring him to me. And immediately when Jesus said that, the very people who were trying to quiet him down, they said, come, he's calling you. So when, when you know your purpose in life, uh, your voice will save you. Your, your voice will make sure that you get the attention that you need. If you shout, don't die without shouting out. Don't die quietly. Meaning that uh, you've got to cry out to the Lord. And as you cry out to the Lord, you will, he will come. He will get your attention. The Bible says we, 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 we don't receive because we ask not. So it's time we've got to ask. The Bible says ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. So when you ask, you will receive. When you knock, the door will be open for you. If you seek, you will find. So you, you can't just be quiet and be modest about the things that are burning in your heart. 
If there's something you want from the Lord, cry out to him. Amen. And as you cry out, he makes sure that uh, you get the attention. There are people who have been overlooked in life. Whether you've been overlooked at work, maybe you have been ignored in your family. You come from a big family and you are just a middle child. They always talk about the firstborn. In Africa, we have this tendency that uba bagaban. No mama gaban. So if you're not a firstborn, uh, your name is not mentioned. And then they mention the first and the last. And those who are in the middle, we, we don't even remember them. They describe you. Which one? Not the tall one, the short one. You, can I say this? Do not, do not allow yourself uh, to be drowned and to be pushed to the back because how people describe you. We all describe you guys. If, if you look at, don't look at people's phones. Because the way they save your name in their phones might offend you. All right? It might offend you. There are so many Smusiso Spanyonis. So to know which one, I would say Smusiso Spanyoni Church. Or Smusiso Spanyoni Watuli. I'm just giving an example. You know? Why? Because if, if, if there are so many people with the same name, same surname, then you've got to make sure for your... For your memory, you, you save them. So don't worry how people save you. Don't, don't, don't even try to look at it because it will offend you. All right? So, so, so when, when you are being described, we, we were at uh, this restaurant and yeah, we were at, at Mark and Bean. So we're asking about this guy there. And then the waiter started to describe this guy. And I says, man, that's not right to describe him the way you do. But, but we got who he's talking about. <laughs> you know? So, so, so there are times when you are being ignored. And, and the only time they talk about you, they are describing you. Uh, there are times when you are being despised. Maybe because of your ethnicity or because of your race or because of the level of your education or because of your lack of skill and, and people ignore you. They, they, when they talk, they, they, they talk above you. You know, it's like when they look at you, they don't see you. They look behind you, talk to the person who's behind you. You know that kind of a thing. Maybe you've been discriminated because um, you were born in the family and um, you were conceived out of wedlock. The, the, one of the interesting stories is the story of David. If you read history, you can see that when Jesse brought his seven sons, uh, he, he brought the sons that were coming from his marriage with his wife. And, and that's why David, in the book of Psalms, I was conceived in sin. Uh, he ignored him uh, because he, he was a son that he got him out of wedlock. And, and uh, he brought his seven sons, and Samuel said, none, none of them is chosen to be king of Israel. And they said, are all your sons here? And he remembered, ah, there's that other one that is taking care of the sheep. The, 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 the one, the Bible actually describes him that uh, red hair, uh, with skin, it describes because he was different from all of them. He was not as tall, as handsome as all of them. And then Samuel said, bring him. And immediately when David came in, the Spirit of God says to Samuel, this is the right one. The Bible says, and he was anointed king in the presence of his brethren. Those who, you know, this story doesn't only ends there. How many of you remember the story of, of, of Japhtha? Japhtha had his brothers. And, and they, they kicked him out because they said, you can't get an inheritance from our father because our father had, a, a, had you with that woman who's a whore. And they chased him away. And when things were bad, were under attack, they went and fetched Japhtha because Japhtha was a warrior. So the same thing with David. When, when people ignore you, people discriminate against you for one reason or the other. When God has anointed you, find your voice. And it's your voice that will bring you back to the position of leadership. They went and fetched Japhtha and said, come and be our captain. David was anointed to be a king in the presence of his family. 
Not, not all other people who were not there. The people who were called to meet with, with Samuel, it was the family of Jesse. Everybody was there. Everybody who thought it's going to be Eliab, it's going to be Shama, it's going to be Abinadab. And God said, none of them. And then David, and everybody says, it can't be David. And God anointed David in the presence of his brethren. God wants to elevate you. When everybody else has decided in the boardroom that we are going to promote so-and-so because so-and-so is connected, so-and-so is better than, than you like this and this, God will elevate you. God will bring in your name. It might be the last name that comes into that interview list, but God will promote you. Hallelujah. Number three, your voice will set things in motion for you. If things are stagnant in your life, started to speak. Because the things in this world, they are voice activated. They are waiting for you to speak and things will come to pass. Your voice will set things in motion. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, and put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. Some version says they, they, were, they, 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 they happened through the command of God. So when the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. So God, the word of God, your voice will put things in motion. You might feel stuck today. You might feel like I don't know whether to... Stay here or try and attempt to move. I want you to find your voice today. Immediately you find your voice, your, your, the things in your life will start to move in the name of Jesus. And then number four, your voice will bring back confidence in your life. It will bring that confidence back. When you read First Samuel chapter 17 verse 34 through to verse 36, it says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion and a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. Your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. Now, I just love this passage because when, when David came to the battlefield, then it was already many days that uh, Goliath was intimidating Saul and his army. The Bible says he would come out twice a day, in the morning and afternoon, to pose a challenge to them and say, guys, do you have a warrior on your side who can fight me? And whoever wins the battle, the, you guys, the, 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 those that loses are going to be the, uh, the, uh, our servants. And, and, and he would say that. And none of them dare challenge Goliath. Until David came. David did not come to fight. David came bringing food to see how his brothers were doing. And then they, Goliath came out, do what he was doing every day. And David, when he heard Goliath, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is insulting the armies of the living God? And people, the other soldiers, he says, boy, who do you know this guy? He says, I don't care who he is. I have a God on my side. And they took him to Saul because his own brothers did not believe in him. And they said, go back home. We know you. You like fame. You, I know you are going to try to do something. And then they took him to Saul. And Saul looked at him. He says, this boy is too young. Because he had to bed. I mean, when he allowed him to go fight Goliath, it means uh, he's betting the future of Israel on this un, un, unprofessional, untrained uh, guy who is not even a soldier. But what, what is it that made Saul to allow uh, David to fight Goliath? It was his voice. He, he found his voice there and he started telling his testimony that I killed a lion and I killed a bear. And Saul looked at him and says, wow, I have found a warrior in this boy. And he says, go ahead and fight Goliath. 
And he tried to put armor on him. And David says, this is too heavy for me. I can't move. I'm too small. This doesn't fit me. And then he says, go fight the way you know how to fight. And he went out and he killed Goliath. If you find your voice, you will have confidence. It doesn't matter whether you are faced with a giant. You know that the God that gave you the ability to bring down a lion and a bear is the same God who will help you bring down the giant in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Do you have confidence in the word of God this morning? Rise up. Go do something about your life in Jesus' name. Look, listen to me, guys. I am a giver and I'm a tither. I might have some deficit in my accounts, but I know that uh, this is not going to last. This too shall pass. Why? Because there's a season to sow a seed. And if there's a season to plant a seed, I'll continue to plant the seed until I have harvest. But some of us, when things are bad, we stop sowing the seed. You know, then, then you, are, you are actually throwing away an opportunity to harvest because it's not going to be a sowing season forever. But when it's sowing season, continue to sow. Even if you don't have a lot, but whatever little you have, continue to sow it because a time for harvest is coming. Have confidence in the word. And lastly, your voice will silence other negative voices. Because there are so many other voices that are trying to drown your voice. But I want you, child of God, to know that there's a voice in you. That uh, you've got to make sure that you find it. Deep down, even in the midst of depression, find your voice. That voice will silence other voices. Now, the story of Abraham, it's a beautiful story. That Abraham was called by God. And God says, through your descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And Abraham still at the age of 90 years, he did not have a son. But Abraham did an unthinkable thing. That when everybody else would come and say, but you said you are going to be a great man. Your descendants are going to be as numerous as the stars. Abraham had to believe what God said and allow the covenant he made with God change his name from being Abraham to Abraham. Find his voice. When people come and say, hey, Abraham, how are you? He says, I'm no longer Abraham. I am Abraham. In other words, he kept on rehearsing it and he wanted people to say it. I mean, it is one of the most embarrassing things when you are childless and you've been saying it for 25 years. The Lord called Abraham at the age of, 20, of 75. Still at the age of 100, Abraham was still believing God for a child. He changed his name from being Abraham to Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. Abraham, a father of many nations. Abraham decided in his heart that I have found my voice. I will continue to believe and trust and call myself a father of many nations. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24, it says, By faith when Moses, okay, it says, By faith Moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses was also looked down upon by his own people because he was raised by Pharaoh. He was known as Pharaoh's grandson. But the Bible says when he found his voice, when he discovered his identity, he refused to be called Pharaoh's grandson. But he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. Moses found his voice and said, I am a deliverer. And when he saw this Egyptian guy who was beating up an Israelite, he went out there, he killed the Egyptian. Why? Because he found his identity. He found his voice. So I'm here to say to you, find your voice this morning. Hallelujah. You, you might have a confused identity. 
But immediately you find your voice, you will find your right identity in life that you are made in the image of God, you are made in his likeness. You are blessed coming in and you are blessed going out. Whatever you touch turns blessed. You are not cursed. You are not fighting curses. Jesus fought the curses on the cross. He destroyed every curse that is following you. Whatever is happening in your life, you are, have the authority to speak and speak blessings over your life in Jesus' name. If we are claiming to be the ones that are fighting curses, what was Jesus doing on the cross? If, if, we, if we think we are specialists of dealing with the, with the with cause, now, let me just say this, that I'm closing, guys. Is there any pastor who has the power to deal with sin? No. We, 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 we bring people to the cross that their sin can be dealt with because it is Jesus who overcame uh, sin on the cross. So, same thing. Bring people to the cross so that they can know that the curse of the law was dealt with. You're not hearing me. When we bring people to the cross, if, they, if we, we want them saved, we know, we say to them, you're, you're, the, the, you have been redeemed. The price for your punishment was paid in full. And we say to them, receive the free gift of salvation. So it is the same thing we've got to say to people. Listen, the punishment, the curse was lifted up on the cross. We bring them to the cross and say, receive the blessing that is already free and given to you. We, we can't be the ones who says we are dealing with the curses. Jesus dealt with them 2,000 years ago. What we are dealing with is a mindset. Okay? We've got to help people to overcome the mind said. Okay? You're missing it. We, we are going to come back to it so that we can deal with it. We are dealing with mindset. Because mindset, psychosomatic things. There are people today who are lying in hospitals. And when they check them, they find out that they are not physically sick. It is, it is a so psychosomatic sickness. They feel like, yes, because the issue is in the mind. If you heal their minds, they are able to deal with the, with the psychological problems. The issue of the curse, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus dealt with it. So we've got to overcome with the mindset. And once we have the right mindset, we are able to rise up above situations. The enemy is there. He's introducing all these things. Sin is real. Sin curbs people. But the power of sin has already been destroyed. If you don't know, sin will overcome you. Sin will ravage you. But once you know that Jesus has dealt with it, you can access it and say, Lord, here am I. And he says, come my child. The prodigal son was a son even when he was eating with pigs and uh, when he was out there without money living a riotous life the father was there waiting for him when he came back to the father and said i am not worthy to be called your son anymore and the father said it will not change you are my son you are blessed child of god so you've got to change your mind and know that you are blessed as we receive the communion I want us just to bow our heads, close our eyes. We want to give an opportunity to those who said, Pastor, we want to be born again. We know that Jesus died on the cross. He redeemed us from sin. He redeemed us from sickness and disease. He redeemed us from the curse. This morning, I just want us, before we serve the communion, I just quickly want us to, to bow our heads. And I want to give this opportunity to all those who said we want to be born again. Is there anyone who says, Mfundis, I want Jesus to be a Lord and Savior of my life. Just lift up your hand. We want to pray for you before we serve communion. So that we can partake with you in the communion. In the name of Jesus. If you are watching us on live stream, you can also join us this morning and accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior of your life. Do not allow this opportunity to pass you by. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want us, I just want you to stand on your feet, my brother. We want to pray for you. And I want us to pray with him this morning. Just say, all of us, let's pray with him. And say, Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning as a sinner. 
forgive me of all my sins. I accept you as a Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for this young, this man that he has raised his hand and he's standing to accept the truth in his life. I pray that a new start, a fresh beginning is starting in his life. And you are giving him, oh God, a new lease in life. That his sins are forgiven, the curses have been broken, sickness has been removed on him, and he is a brand new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We would love to see you after the service just to give you a little something to tell you how to live a Christian life. God bless you. You can take your seat in Jesus' name. Let's continue to serve communion and then we will go ahead and... Amen. Healing power comes from Thank the you. blood. He took bread and he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Now, the easier way, I think we're all now getting used to this. There are two seals. The first one is the, the, the transparent one. Um, make sure that you lift that one first, not both of them. Then you get your waffle. And then, then, then be careful when you lift the second one because it might spill. And then you can lift the second one. Um, and the Bible says he took bread and he said to them, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you guys at home can take the bread with us and then I want you to take the bread. Uh, amen. Let's break the bread together in Jesus' name. Let's partake. Jesus name and the Bible says after dinner then he took the cup and he said this is the my blood do this as you remember the new covenant I want us to drink in Jesus name amen father we are thankful for this great opportunity to be partakers of the new covenant that we are being renewed daily as we fellowship with you. That our commitment to you is renewed. We are finding our voice in the midst of this world that says we are cursed. In the midst of this world where they say we are sinners condemned to go to hell. We know that we are redeemed. The price was paid. Paid in full 2,000 years ago. Father, we are thankful even in this world where sickness 
looks like it's more powerful than the blood of Jesus. We refuse this morning in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, we are healed. We walk in divine health, in divine healing in Jesus' name. We seal it today as we take the communion in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to all of you guys that joined us last week at Centurion. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. We appreciate all of you guys. In Jesus' name, amen.